Son of God came out in 2009, and it's a spiritual look at the sun. So before we get into the other videos and news of the day, I wanted to read a passage from this book. And the name of the chapter that we are going to be reading is Our Local Life Transmitter. So I'm not going to start with a preface, but it's wise that you know that there is a difference between a spiritual interpretation of the sun. I think it's all interlinked, but not everybody looks at all the different perspectives. There's the mainline scientific view of the sun. There are some of the fringe views of the sun. And of course, the flat earth memes and, and things of that nature. And there are other people with their interpretations of the sun, wormholes, things of that nature. And then we have what the ancients said. That's what we're gonna be focused on today. But as a reminder, the rise of the church was well known for its persecution of those that were following various spiritual teachings and texts, including some that are alleged to be some of the true teachings of Jesus. Anyways, in the early version of Christianity, we did have a break off and there still is this type of uh, turmoil to this day and a persecution of those looking at the sun for some reason. This seems to be something that has been happening for thousands of years. In addition, I've talked to you about the cycles of war being discovered by a man, a Russian man in 1918, by the name of uh, something to the tune of Alexander Chavinsky. And he spent about a good 30 years of his life in the gulag for some of his theories about the solar cycles and their connection to more violent males on the battlefield and how the oligarchs or the governments uh, may be able to use that information. There was something about his discoveries. There was something about what he was looking at that upset the powers that be in Russia at that time. Fast forward to our current day and age where it's probably more important than ever to look at the solar cycles and their influence on human trends, human spirituality, uh, the things that are taking place in society, upheavals, civil unrest, conflicts, and we should be aware when there are times in which our energies could be used against us. But ultimately, the sun is not to blame because the sun is our local transmitter. So I feel a spiritual connection with the sun. It's not just something to look at and be afraid that if the sun were to stop producing a certain amount of solar radiation, that our world would end. But there is some legitimate concern that our civilization could come to a screeching halt with what is taking place. So I would argue that a larger cycle is taking place beyond anything that we may understand currently at the moment, but I don't think that we're outside of the sun. I think that there's a deeper connection, ultimately, spiritually. So the fear of the sun, as well as the worship of the sun, neither of those really make much sense if we are, on a spiritual essence level, a part of the sun. So I'm just going to pause there. And so I will read now. And by the way, this book has a foreword by Graham Hancock. So I want to mix things up not just cover news, but also cover something else that I'm passionate about. In this small patch of galaxy, there would be naught but empty space without the sun acting as our local broadcaster, beaming the power of the light through its solar system and beyond. It fills this space with energy and is perhaps the primal battery behind all other forms of energy, from bolts of lightning to thought itself. It is solar gravity, that holds the family of planets together, and it is solar energy that builds and powers the incredible variety of living organisms on this planet. Still, many pass through their day without giving a second thought to the sun, and he writes the sun with a capital S, and then he explains why he does that earlier in the book, to give it that deliberate prominent status. So most people go throughout the day, as I've said, without giving much of a thought to the sun, to that which played the greatest part in making the day possible. And all the days before, and literally as I do this, the sun is rising. I'm starting my day with a video on the sun. 
Without the electromagnetic entity that is our sun, there would be nothing here. There would be no solar system, no us, nor even place for a humble grain of sand. There would be nothing at all but nothingness, occasional patches of thin gas and the twinkle of distant stars. Many years before starting on this book, it occurred to me that the sun, our own personal star, may be an entity of sorts. For years, I entertained the idea of an intellectual possibility, there being no particular eureka point. But eventually, an initial inkling grew into a conviction that we are daily in the presence of a celestial being. In the literal sense of the word. Maybe they don't geoengineer by accident. Many have asked. I'm adding that part in. It now makes sense that sunshine seems so full of life and uplifting vibrations and that however fierce and scorching it might get at noon in the desert it is rarely referred to as a depressing as depressing or gloomy it seems fitting that the arrival of sun in the morning and its departure at night should so often provide the most majestic light show on earth our reassuring daily miracle thank you sun and a quote from Ralph Emerson. The sun shines and warms and lights us, and we have no curiosity to know why this is so, but we ask the reason of all evil, of pain and hunger and mosquitoes and silly people. It was leftover materials from sun's creation that assembled into earth and the other planets. We are made from the solar afterbirth, so to speak, though it is not understood how this process was accomplished. Whether acting with intent or not, solar forces would have been a prime agent in the conditioning of Earth over billions of years as it prepared for the arrival of multi-celled organic life. The life we enjoy depends entirely upon the sustenance of the sun. Without its light, there would be no organic life on Earth, other than a few deeply frozen and dormant bacteria, even life around deep sea thermal vents would eventually cease as the oceans froze solid. Does it not seem unlikely that such a generous enabler and supporter of life would itself be just a inanimate, unconscious accident of the cosmos? The dramatic proposition that prompted the writing of this book runs counter to everything that we and many generations before us have been taught and brought up to belief. It was fundamentally not a part of the scientific mindset in the 18th, 19th, or 20th century, and is something that we dismissively reject from prior cultures. Cultures. Ooh. <laughs> a little bit of morning humor. From prior cultures as a symptom of their ignorance and lack of understanding. It is not a new proposition and indeed once held sway with the majority of this planet's population. It is not a threatening proposition, although millions of people and many entire cultures have been destroyed for supporting it. It is not a difficult proposition, although very little in the scientific, cultural, or religious underpinnings of today's civilization even hints at it. And though it is not based on hard science, there is nothing in hard or theoretical science that disproves the proposition. The proposition is that the sun, or he rather says just sun, again with a capital S. The proposition is that sun is a living, conscious being with a intelligence that dwarfs our own, I, I would say contributes to it. I am not only suggesting that sun is a large, complex system with some form of self-governing intelligence to it, but also that it is a living being, aware of itself and its place in the universe that is fully conscious and communicates with other conscious beings at its own level, at other levels, that is conscious is so far beyond what we enjoy that it could be according, accorded 
deity status of a high order and be recognized as a conscious being by atheists and agnostics, whatever spin they put on it. As staggering as this proposition might seem, it is hardly novel and was once held as a nearly universal belief or understanding in most parts of the globe. It is possible that generations of Neolithic peoples, the ancient Sumerians, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, excuse me, excuse me if I enunciate this incorrectly, the Chaldeans, the Greeks, the Romans, Maya, Inca, Aztec, and the ancient Celts and Native Americans were not completely deluded. They were not completely deluded. Perhaps they were right to regard sun as a living celestial being rather than view the prime enabler of life on earth as just another random event in the infinite sea of space <laughs> deserving neither credit nor appreciation. We can add the world's 750 million Hindus to the list above as well as followers of Shinto the native Japanese religion that reveres sun goddess Amaratsu. Here's a quote from Sitting Bull, a Sioux chief. Behold, my friends, the spring has come, the earth has gladly received the embraces of the sun, and we shall soon see the results of their love. So I'm just going to pause. Pausing and recognizing just simple things like organic sun life is the positive side of life, that is the glass half empty, that is beyond the conspiracy, that is beyond just constantly talking about problems in the world. That's why I do this, this is the counterbalance. Not everyone will accept that and people will fight against it. And they will point to spirituality being found somewhere else or argue in favor of no spirituality. That's their path and that's their right. But there's reasons why I choose to bring in conversations like this to bring balance to the larger conversation that I've been asking for years on Outside the Box TV. Who are we? Why are we here? What is our connection to these cycles? And as I've talked about in other videos, I became aware of the cycle influence over our lives, but I didn't really realize that it was the sun at first. First, I realized that there were cycles that were dictating behaviors, thoughts, emotions, um, certain types of inclinations to move to certain places, things of that nature, high energy, low energy. I learned from personal experience. Then I learned about the solar cycles. Then what I learned about the political structures and even controlled revolutions and when wars pop off and even drive-by shootings in the street, even crimes, even moments of spiritual breakthroughs, lucid dreaming, looking at spaceweather.com and what's going on, what's going on in my dream state. Uh, I'm going to have to just pause, continue reading and come back to this. But yes... My soul path here in this body includes discussing my perspective and what feels like a relationship with sun. And that's something that for whatever reason is built into our psychology for people to be against that and to be afraid of that. There is some sort of built in switch that almost seems to be within humanity that tries to turn it against those individuals that have those interests or to marginalize them as if they're witches and we're back in the dark ages. And this is coming up time and time again. And so this is very much involved in the larger conversations. We talk about control of populations. We talk about mind control and social engineering. We're also talking about religions. And there are people today that are so ignorant when they hear people talking about the sun as a spiritual being, they're immediately going orthodox religion without even realizing there's this whole history of the people that looked at the sun being massacred by Orthodox religions. I believe Islam does not necessarily even have a, a strong place for the sun, possibly more so on the, on the moon or lunar. So that's another example. Uh, the Assyrians were, were there before the Muslims, for example, and they were looking at the sun. And so I think that that is something that I would like to get more information on. Right? If you'd like to send me something specific on that, I think that has a place in this. But the Christian Catholic Inquisition on societies that had knowledge about the sun, that is also in our history. 
So you will see both the Orthodox religious folks and the atheists that say that they're against Orthodox religions go against the Gnostics or come against those that are looking at bits of ancient knowledge, whether it come from the Gnostic realm or from the realm of the East or from the realm of the Native American, they will seek to degrade it for their own agenda. And I think that at a root level, there's a reason why we're seeing this level of soul sickness from what some people could call our peers. And there's a reason why this is taking place. And the internet can really pump out a lot of darkness to send people into false directions and false lights. Oh no, don't look over here. Look over here. Yeah, look over here at Planet X. Look over here at Planet X again. Look over here at Planet X again from the perspective of being afraid of the world ending. Now look over here again, you're getting sleepier. You're getting sleepier. You're getting sleepier. Instead of looking at maybe something a little bit more grounded or connected to source, going back to the literature. And we're on page 76. Whether Assyrian or Aztec, Celt or Cherokee, priests in the culture of sun worship were capable of controlling and defining the religious arena as much as were the priests and their counterparts in the religions that replaced them. Pause. And so it's also been used against populations. Not all people that look at the sun have an interest in controlling populations. So that's a straw man argument that people try to use. So yes, there has been elements of sun worship that has been used to sacrifice. But I would also argue that these same ferocious sacrifices are actually going on today to the tune of millions overseas. So if we're going to be concerned about things of that nature, which we should, we have some modern day examples of the sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And when we do see elements of global systems using sun symbolism for their own occult agenda to channel in that power, just because someone's connecting with the sun doesn't mean it's inherently all good. Uh, they could be trying to channel that with their sun symbolism and through how they are perceived by standing next to the sun symbol or things of that nature, and people do that as well. So as with all symbols, they have multiple meanings. I'm not an expert on it. I haven't studied symbols officially, but I think that some of this knowledge, as Carl Jung would say, is in the collective unconscious. And I've never officially read his work, but I actually came across someone recently that told me that Carl Jung had visions and predicted World War II, which I did not know. And I am someone today who's a philosopher that delves in the realm of human psychology and the root reasons why people do what they do. But ultimately, the real reasons why we're heading towards this next conflict, along with this waking knowing that we could see foreign armies marching on U.S. soil one day as the passing of the next solar cycle or the one after that brings this karmic cycle, karmic return to the nation. A lot of people don't want to hear that. But I see the, the sun is a conduit of nature that is pushing forward a cycle through, along with, of course, those part of the elite of our world that are using their knowledge of the sun. They are using a knowledge of the sun, the people that run our planet and run our military industrial complex. They are using a knowledge of the sun to control the population. That doesn't mean that it's the sun's fault. It means that when the sun is, is energized and it's powerful and it's shooting out, the earth is responding to that and we're responding to that. Ultimately, it's a healing thing. It gives us life. But all that excess energy could also be used and weaponized. And we can have weaponized weather. And there are technologies, however these governments, whoever these governments are, whether human sourced or not, they're using powers of the sun to hurt humanity. So a lot of people want to put a block up right to the deeper knowledge about this stuff because they're aware of elements of the conspiracy using the sun symbolism. And they go, oh, oh, bad, 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 sun's a light bulb, bad, bad, bad. Without looking deeper at the solar cycles. Well, then why do they do certain things when the sun's more active, I would ask you. Why aren't we asking ourselves that as a culture? <laughs> well, because we're a cult then, the American culture. There aren't enough people that are asking those questions about the sun. And there are a lot of people that strictly look at the sun from a scientific perspective or from a doom and gloom, fear of civilization going down perspective. And a lot of people are blocked spiritually. A lot of people have not yet chosen to look through the veil. And uh, 
looking at things like the sun's connection to our world and cycles is a, a real world example of looking at the veil without it just being a metaphor, but truly looking to see the causal connection between things, the spiritual and the material. In today's day and age, in 2018, people think that light influencing material or like, you know, also maybe also the idea of sound affecting the material world, sound or light, they think that's insane. Science has proved that. Science has proved that music can affect plants in a certain way. If you're eating food today, that food came from the sun because that sun grew something. We, we've been like so detached and removed from this way of living that people are dumbed down to the most basic of basic and taught, well, if you look at the sun, you might be pagan and worshiping it and naughty, naughty. When it's, it's understanding this interconnectedness. It's understanding the interconnectedness. So we'll go back and read a little bit more and um, we'll come back another day, right? And maybe read a little bit more from this book. Let me know if you really enjoyed this segment. The other uh, video on solar activity didn't really have a whole lot of commentary, but it was more from the scientific perspective only without the spiritual commentary, where I am basically summarizing another person's scientific presentation on the solar cycle, that we're going into solar minimum, that there's different perspectives on the effects of solar minimum, and what information scientists have today about predicting the strength of the next solar cycle, which is solar cycle 25. So he writes that the Aztec hierarchy was capable of as much cruelty, greed, corruption, and deceit as the Christian zealots who slaughtered them in another God's name. Unfortunate stuff can and usually does happen when access to any God or spiritual truth is controlled by a priest class and becomes defined by creed and dogma backed up by scripture and authority. Authority, the archons. And that is the definition of the archons. Of course, it gets a little bit more specific when you're looking at it from the spiritual perspective, but from the Greek translation, it's Greek for ruler. So rulers, authorities, as well as those who are in the mindset of ruling over others. Well, they have the archonic consciousness by definition, but I'm already off topic by being in that state of needing to rule or control or manipulate. Many have sought to explain how ancient cultures had knowledge of astronomical phenomena that were discovered by science in relatively recent times with cutting edge equipment. We still struggle to explain the technology that was able to design and precision build by hand the massive monuments and temples located in Egypt, Central America, China, Cambodia, Britain, I guess that would be Stonehenge, and other parts of the world. Though various theories may exist as to building techniques and the nature of ceremonial activities, it is abundantly clear that early cultures held solar and celestial activities to be of far more greater importance than does today's predominant culture. But of course, you know, when the sun's connection to our planet and the sun's changes thus affect the planet to where magnetic north is moving, oh yeah, then it affects our reality where they're, they're changing literally uh, the landing strips at airports. And 2011 was the year of the announcement of that being done. There hasn't been really a lot of talk since then, but that was also around the same time period that the earthquake in Chile caused the earth to move slightly off of its axis. But these earthquakes are also connected with the sun. But despite all of this technology and what NASA really knows or other groups, uh, there isn't that type of admission for some reason, yet there's been other scientific studies and common sense studies and theories and models that have come to an understanding that there is a connection between earthquakes and uh, other natural disasters, things that result in tsunamis. We look at the solar flare right before Fukushima, also right around the time that Obama struck Libya. People could say that something else was taking place with man-made technology. Sure, but what happened was the X-class solar flare, which was um, 
a very large solar flare, that happened first. So if they are using other technology, they're using it in conjunction with solar activity. And a lot of people, right, that may talk about the other theory, the directed energy theory, the government theory, they for some reason edit out the idea that they're using those technologies in conjunction with the sun because the sun isn't on their radar at all. So they are connected. And I'm noticing in recent years, people are slow, slowly uh, making that intellectual connection with causal activity between the sun and used in conjunction with other technologies that this type of mad scientist uh, behavior that this type of mad science could exist. The implications of conscious solar entity are truly awesome and might help to explain the why, if not, at, if not the how, of some of the phenomena in the solar system, which astronomers view as strange, but accidental coincidence. The most familiar of these to us will be uh, that of the total solar eclipse, which we had last year. Of course, we were only able to watch see a partial solar eclipse based on where I am in Colorado. The next one coming around is going to be in 2024 and that seems to be in line with world events. So the, the total solar eclipse seem to be major monumental points of shift and maybe even in particular areas in which it goes over. Like for example, it went over Oregon. So all these people were huddled in Eastern Oregon. Then there were fires afterwards. Was there a connection between the total solar eclipse an increase in fires, natural disasters. We also had a series of fires in Colorado this year. I mean, I think that's a good question. If that path also is a sign of other things. So there's a particular path that's going to be going through the middle of the nation, not too far from the Madrid Fault in 2024. So again, I think that we're coming up on a point where the solar energy and other energies, they intersect with the solar energy uh, what are called supernovas or stars that collide. There's something predicted for 2022. We have the geopolitical stuff, which isn't our focus in this video. Brief mention of Elon Musk and whatever's going on with their space programs. Uh, then, of course, there are the people that are calling for violence in 2022 and 2023 on pretty incredible radical levels. And I wonder if that bot program is, is, is deliberate or if there is a deliberate program to amp up the mentality of this nation to a certain level of violence in the 2020s when you really should be focused on a more spiritual connection with the sun. What would you rather do? If powerful energies of spirit and light and enlightenment were coming in, would you rather be fighting someone or be meditating somewhere and taking in that download? And I'm glad like I took the time to say this. So I'll tell you what I'd rather have in, in the 2020s. Or that be somewhere other than this, if this is going to be in a bad area or this people or whatever, if it's going to be lit on fire, or there's going to be a war here, or a bunch of people hurting each other. Uh, my intentions is to line up with what's happening with this, this incredible activity and to go deeper into spirit, deep into spirit to the point where we don't even know how we're going to be affected by some of these colliding spiritual energies. And that's what seems to be coming up. That's what seems to be coming up. And that's why I'm talking about this even more than normal. As we go into some very scary times on our planet, I'm telling you folks, there's something behind these trends that we're going into with China, with Russia, with the economy, with our president, with the next one, and even with the past one, and controlled movements and controlled protests and things of that nature. We've seen so much of the manipulation in our world. And I'm telling you, right? We can go ahead all day long and saying that there is no connection between us and the sun. But the true powers that be, and I believe it could even be beyond human, what type of uh, colony farm we're in. They know how we're affected by the sun. They know the effect the sun has on the rise and fall of civilizations. And that means that there could be think tanking and longer term plans to create certain type of events to direct the direction of the human species. And so we should have this knowledge. We should have this wisdom. We should understand these trends. So we can be in the driver's seat of our own lives. You don't talk about self-improvement. You don't talk about being tapped in. You don't talk about being 
ultra homo sapien? You want to talk about actually going beyond just the same old chasing our tail? You want to talk about going outside the box? You want to talk about being the alternative? You want to talk about revolutionary thought that can change our world? You're talking about ideas whose time has come that cannot be held down by standing armies? We're looking at it. And we get start, you can start independently by just simply the understanding of the solar influence on some level and how. Take a pen and paper out. Do an inventory. Okay, where were you on 9-11 the years prior, the late 90s? Those also some dark city years. How about 2010, 2011, 2012 was we were ramping up in the solar cycle. Did you see your relationships start getting shaked up? Did you start to feel in the last couple of months, even though things are intense, that they're not as intense as they were three years ago or two years ago? Yeah, we're moving away from the solar maximum. We're going to solar minimum. If anything, right, you may still see protests and violence in the street, but it's the quiet before the storm. And notice how people are becoming aware of that, but they're not connecting that with a solar minimum, which some people are calling a coming grand solar minimum. Looking at a long-term decline of potential solar activity and solar radiation, which in the end result of that, you have a weakening heliosphere, which allows cosmic rays to enter our solar system, right? So we're not just talking about effects on the earth, we're talking about changes in the sun. They're going to be changing things on planets throughout our solar system. Those known, those unknown. And that would probably go beyond the word planet. So, I mean, literally, like, it's like we literally are in a scene from Ghostbusters. But one of the most powerful conduits, right, in this equation is the sun. It's not necessarily some sort of a, a, a zapper. But when we talk about the mental illness in today's day and age... What you don't necessarily hear in this book or from mental health professionals is that there is a strong connection between mental health problems and other issues within society and what I would say a, a toxic combination of a, a mass of this energy hitting the people in the cities that are also interacting with the cyanide electromagnetic energy. The cell phones in their pockets next to their genitalia thinking that they're woke. And just true, I, I, that, that's great. 75% of you watch on a mobile. It's still true that you shouldn't be that connected with a cell phone. I mean, common sense stick states. Your, your personality, your character isn't being insulted. Your health uh, is being watched over. I'm watching over for your health, for my own health. That's why I don't carry a cell phone, right? So I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that it's okay. So I think that this is way before it's time for modern humans, homo sapiens, to be at that level of deep understanding. That this toxic soup of the sun coming in, hitting the concrete, not having a real place to ground out, add in the cell phone towers and everything else that's there, and whatever this 5G is, which is just amplifying that signal. And I would say that the powers that be could probably drown out to a certain degree or confuse the spiritual codes coming from the sun. The sun is sending spiritual codes to us. But if if our energy bodies and centers aren't even relaxed enough and perceptive enough to, to feel that, then we could be like uh, basically electrified. And you know, this sounds like a cancerous state to be like experiencing that much radiation. And so Modern science and modern health does not recognize just so you know. Just so you know, like the average psychiatrist, the average counselor, um, you can even look online and they talk about psychology today. They do not incorporate this to a certain degree. You'd have to probably find a Native American who's a counselor at like NARA or something like that. They may be open to that, but most people are not. They, they think that they have their understanding of rational recovery. They think that they know what's causing some of the drug addictions. I even found a connection between, through my own recovery years ago, the solar cycle going into a minimum after a maximum and discovering what I believe I discovered to be called the drug cycles or the cycles of, uh, of, uh, of abuse, periods in which people are filling up the AA rooms, periods in which they're leaving the AA rooms and they're going back out. I actually saw a direct cycle correlation from the late 90s going all the way up until 2005 from, oh my God, this is like hell to, 
Oh my God, all those people that look like they were zombies are in treatment centers. I, I know that person, I know that person, I know that person, I know that person. And I made a direct connection and I've never seen anyone else also make that human behavioral connection. So I think that there's literally like on a planetary level, probably less than a hundred of us that are deeply dedicated to looking at the human behavioral connection to the sun. There might be several thousand, but it gets really lost in translation. And I think that it's a private thing. I think that it's a thing that people may keep in the closet. If it's, if it's of some form of, of some form of strange spirituality, religion, or sexuality. There are people that I've talked to that have said, oh my God, that makes so much sense. I have never heard about that. Wow. Here we are, 2018, thousands of years of history, thousands of years of the ancients talking about the sun, and here's where we are. Here's where we popped out of the womb with our little smartphones and Facebook, and wow, I never thought about that. Wow, what advanced humanity. Very connected with the basics of all. Very evolved, or is it something else? And I'm saying if we allow ourselves to be so dumbed down that we don't even question the stars, the sun, the moon, that we don't even connect with something greater than ourselves, a world that's bigger than this one, yet connected to this one. Understand that this world is not some isolated island. That means nothing. That was made from nothing. It has meaning. It has purpose. And the reason that certain things happen in our lives and our world during certain solar cycles are also for a reason and worthy of investigation. So we're going to find a place to close here. Again, as the sun rises today, the entire miracle of our existence relies upon an extraordinary chain of coincidence that starts with the precision or precise expansion rate of the universe from the birth of earth the single largest influence upon the links leading from then to now will have risen from the solar influences a subconscious i'm skipping forward recognition of sun as a conscious being survives today in popular culture also, I want to mention Truman Show had the symbolism of the sun. With Dark City, it was more so the symbolism of the sun over water, or water specifically, or Neptune. It has survived today in popular culture if the abundance of sun burst designs and smiley sun faces is anything to go by. Yeah, smiley sun faces, even the Walmart logo to the Facebook emoji. And once you look for solar imagery and graphics and design, it becomes inescapable. All right, I think I'm just going to come to a close because it goes deeper. And then it starts talking about the sun's interior. Uh, Indigo Scout uh, complimented a, a video recently regarding the sun. I just want to tell him, just want to you know, add some context. Um, I appreciate the fact that this may be reaching you now, but I'd like to see this reach the world. I'd like to see this reach more people. I'd like to see my ebook uh, improved. I'd even appreciate some volunteers to really, especially those that share my vision. And right now is really not that time where I have that type of alliance with folks that are like research peers. Um, there's something about this study that ultimately drives people away. Less than five people have ever commented on my ebook. I don't know what it is. Is there some sort of a subliminal? that shuts off the consciousness once someone's given my link. But I have, I have seen how I've contributed, contributed something to this level of research and it's gone nowhere so far. It's gone nowhere so far. In fact, it would be after the Mark Passio conference that I would move back to Portland, Oregon. And despite what I accomplished there and with other information, um, I was not coming back to a stable living situation. And a lot of people have a stigma that if someone is willing to live in their vehicle, there must be something deeply wrong with them that they're not revealing. Like hardcore methamphetamine abuse, fill in the blank here. And I felt that that stigma held me back 
But what hurt was I had just contributed something to humanity that was not based in a conspiracy theory, if you're with me so far, that was not based in my life story and talking about my own pain, was based in a understanding of the source cycles and using uh, multiple, multiple overall in the whole PDF, you're looking at hundreds of scientific links from showing the charts from Alexander Chavinsky to uh, uh, giving you some information that Burl Payne discovered and his understanding of wars breaking out as we a re a reach the solar cycle peak and as we drop right after the peak and right before the peak, we see the most conflicts. It'd be because of Burl Payne that I would find that. And so it, it was like, not something crazy like Beautiful Mind where it's all in somebody's head, but society can really treat a guy like he's crazy for looking at the correlations between the sun and world events. And I have found that people have a deeper understanding of what planet is in retrograde than my work on the sun or basic stuff on the sun. And I find that to be ass backwards. This deep level of professed deep study and understanding of the sun or astrology and it's relating to the sun without looking at other things that are a little bit more basic that are not in relation to specific planets or someone's birth sign. And I'm not discrediting that and I'm not debunking that. I'm saying that it, it seems to be indicative of an inverted world to begin with when that even has predominance over some of the most basic understandings of the sun. And having lived in modern contemporary American cities where there's supposedly a lot of people into magic and spirituality and energy, I've actually seen more of an interest in the demons, goblins, uh, vampires, and astrology, witchcraft, and spells than a genuine interest in some of the things that I mentioned today and the things that were mentioned in my ebook. So a lot of people like to divert. And even within the solar arena, no, let's divert. Let's let's keep it about the crops. Let's keep it about civilization ending, according to some people. But even within that paradigm, there's so much more to talk about with the moral decline of civilization slide. What's happening with human relationships? What's happening with these modern day Aztec almost sacrifices to the sun for who knows what type of alien archonic overlord as they kill more and more in the Middle East? But I would say there's more to know here. I would say there's more to know here about our place here on the earth. The Orthodox religions and their uh, conquistador crusades against those that had an idea about the sun. I think that's very telling. I think it's very telling we would have a flat earth movement right now and bots that are appearing every time the sun comes up as if we're against them, as if we're not trying to really contribute something to the conversation as to what is reality, where are we? So I would encourage you, if you're truly interested in exploring your own spirituality without getting involved in a fad, the things that we may be needing to look at, and I don't necessarily mean literally, but like look at in terms of intellectually, look at in terms of spiritually. I would recommend that as a starting place and not someone that's channeling from some supposed direction about a certain type of Ashtar, this group or Galactic Federation or a certain type of presidential candidates saving us from ourselves. And a lot of the, uh, the internet spiritual websites um, that talk about channeled messages are pushing absolute false information as far as I'm concerned. And they will talk about the sun like Michelle Walling did with her interview with Simon X three years ago. And they use just general information like what I was sharing about the sun to promote this, the whole world shifting for the better. Just whoosh, one of those type of sentient things for September of 2015. Well, do you think since September of 2015, we have shifted out of the previous dimension, dimension of reality and that we're in this whole new? The thing is, people like that aren't held accountable. Even if that doesn't happen, people will edit reality and say that shift did happen and that we're already on the other side or something to fill in their paradigm. 
while at the same time, in reality, actually overlooking the real information at the sun, its trends, maybe a true spiritual connection, while actually overlooking that information. So I'm here today to bring us back to center with regards to this topic. Again, if this is something that you enjoyed, please consider becoming uh, a Patreon. Uh, don't make very much from the AdSense on this channel, but I do need to dramatically increase the amount of videos that I'm uploading just simply to make it. But what I really enjoy doing, in addition to just covering in short bits the news, is discussing something that's close to my heart. And I want to thank you for your support. Please subscribe, like, and share this video.